Trail. Okay, we're coming on. Aloha. It's June the 3rd. It's Wednesday. It's 11 o'clock. It's Trump week. I'm Tim Apicelli, your host. And the title of this show today is When the Looting Starts, the Shooting Starts. Uh, to a certain degree, that was true. We had on June, the, the just recently on Monday, June the 1st, uh, we didn't have looting take place, but we saw, we certainly saw shooting take place. And the shooting was in the form of tear gas, rubber bullets, pepper bullets, and um, this was all planned as a strategy. And I'm going to go and talk about a little bit about that. And it all started with a quote from Donald Trump when he was in the Rose Garden, uh, just before he went and walk, took a walk over to St. Um, St. John's Episcopal Church. And Donald Trump said the following, I will fight to keep them safe, meaning the protesters. I will fight to protect you. I am your president of law and order and an ally of all peaceful pro protests. Now, simultaneously at that time, um, or prior to that, that speech, uh, William Barr, attorney general, took a little walk over to the park. And he, he, he did a quick survey of the park and then walked back. And while Trump was speaking those words, um, the mounted police, the National Guard, the park police in Lafayette Park were shooting off canisters of tear gas and firing rubber bullets to disperse a completely 100% peaceful crowd. Not 99%, not 99.5%, a 100% peaceful crowd. That crowd was cleared immediately, quickly, for the one purpose and one purpose only, was for a photo opportunity for Donald Trump to walk across Lafayette Park and go in front of the church and pose and have a photo op holding a Bible. Uh, this has spurred a lot of comments, a lot of criticism. And the bottom line is this was a bad optics for Donald Trump, but Donald Trump thinks it's not a bad optics. So I wanna, I wanna uh, welcome everyone to the show. Uh, Winston, welcome. Cynthia Sinclair, welcome. Stephanie Dalton, welcome. Thank you for coming on Trump Week this week. Cynthia, let's go to you, and um, I want your your comments. I want your your what, what your perception of of this whole debacle was all about. And uh, give me your thoughts, please. I think the irony of the fact that while he was saying "I will protect you," he was attacking them. So that's just really a huge thing of a, I think that's just such an important factor to look at. Now, granted, he says he didn't order them to be dispersed. It was um, Attorney General Barr that did it. Well, apparently G G um, Attorney General Barr had ordered that to be cleared earlier. And then when he arrived and saw that it wasn't, so he reordered it. Now, maybe the original order didn't include bullets and you know, rubber bullets and tear gas, but the second one must have, because that is exactly what they used. Now, I watched Stephanie, um, whatever the gal's name is, the new, or, uh, the new spokesperson for um, the new press secretary. I can't remember her name. Haley. 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 That's it. Thank you. Um, I watched Kaylee this morning stand there and say to all the reporters in her little press conference that um, the people were throwing bricks, they were throwing rocks, they were throwing frozen water bottles. Well, there is a, um, a, a company that was from Australia, a press company that was there from Australia, and they filmed the entire thing. So they were filming at the time that this happened. So, well, I'm so was CNN. I, I was watching CNN live when it was occurring. Exactly. And I guarantee you, he had to put on his gas mask 
they there were people getting their eyes washed out with milk and water. Um, I saw evidence of people being shot right on the spot, and they were showing their wounds, um, the marks of of looked to be a round, a big round uh, diameter uh, object that hit them. Uh, so, it, it, this Cynthia, this is the old thing that on uh, inaugural day in 2016, where uh, Kellyanne Conway said, "These are alternative facts. This is nothing more than an alternative fact. Who are you going to believe, your own eyes or the administration?" And I, I've never seen a more blatant case of, of gaslighting, once again, gaslighting take place in front of a, all of the nation, the world, in fact, uh, that this thing was provoked by, by uh, violence, by the protesters, and they simply responded. Go ahead, you know, continue. One of the things that has struck me in all of this is the fact that on my um, Twitter and on my Facebook page, I have tons of people coming on to say, oh, well, they didn't use tear gas. They didn't shoot bullets. And I think you're just going to take the word of an administration that has lied, what, 8,000 some odd times since taking office against what you saw with your own eyes. And that's the part that just is so crazy. Like you say, the gaslighting is. Uh, I'm sorry to correct you, Cynthia, but I believe that's 18,000 lies. Thank you. I knew it was something ridiculously With huge. an eight. <laughs> 18,000, which is even bigger and more, regardless of the number, too. Thank you for the correction. But regardless of the number, we have been gaslit so much from this president and from this administration that people are starting to believe it. They don't believe their own eyes. They fall for what the, you know. Well, the here's the question. Did, did Fox News um, replay any of the footage from um, CNN or from the Australian news crew, did they even did they even publicize that on their station? I, I, I'm going to guess they didn't. I, now, I, I can't confirm that or not, but I'm going to guess they did not play any of that footage um, prior to the mounted when the mounted police started coming in and pushing everyone back. You know, one of the things that I thought was pretty remarkable because I go and flip to Fox News and I try to watch all of them, right? Fox News shows nothing but looters. Every time I've been on it, nothing but looters. They don't even show any of the peaceful present, you know, protests. They don't show any of that. All they show is the looting and the fires and the damage. And they never once mention the word white supremacist. It's all Antifa. It's all, you know, bad actors. But none of them are white supremacists. Okay, is- good point, Cynthia. I'm going to jump over here to Winston. Winston. What were your observations and uh, what are your comments and criticisms? Well, it's just a sad day for, for America, for uh, Americans, for, for humans, but it's also a hopeful day that people are, I, I want to say that they're waking up and this is, this is morphed. This was a week ago, a, um, a start of demonstrations about racial uh, justice and a, and a murder that we saw on TV at the hand of police officers. And uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, the police are there to serve and protect. And the, the huge majority do exactly that. They, they were probably more disgusted and horrified than anybody else um, for, uh, for people that, that uh, honor their, their professions. Now, let me, let me jump in here for the really quick question. Did Donald Trump add the gasoline early on when he said that these were thugs, um, that domination is required, total domination, and when the, shoot, when the looting starts, the shooting starts. Did that at all put a, a, add a, any more gasoline onto the flames or did, was those comments largely ignored? Every, everything he has done since he's been in office and before he's been in office has, has added fuel to this fire. This is just now it's hotter. But when we're what we're seeing now is that you're having people protesting they're angry about so many things they're angry and you're you're feeling this and 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 the racial part this is a people have woken up about this now i think in a way that we didn't before before ferguson or all the many other injustices this that is important but now we're looking at the basic fabric of america where you're having i mean that that uh picture of military on the lincoln memorial um, of, of Lafayette Park, where we're seeing the basic right of, of Americans to assemble peaceably in protest for whatever reason is now being 
threatened by a complete militarization and takeover of our country. So now what you're having, you're having the governor say, we don't want federal troops here. We can manage this crisis. Our cities might be, uh, you know, burning. We might be having uh, riots. We might be having something, but we have this under control. And if we need help, we'll ask you. Thanks very much. So well, let's, uh, let's talk about what the, the, the last point you just made, and that's the Insurrection Act of uh, 1807. Uh, he's basically saying that if the governors can't stop the looting and, and, and quell the violence, that he'll do it. Um, Donald Trump in the past has made many, many uh, threats, not knowing the Constitution, not knowing the first thing about the rule of law. Uh, was this this bluster or, or is he actually going to fulfill that promise? Now, I know we had 1,600 troops come into Washington, D.C., um, but does that carry forward in other states? I, you know, that, that's what we're going to see this next week. But I, uh, hopefully, you know, you have people in the military saying, we are not your tool for re-election or suppressing uh, Americans in these things. No one advocates for violence in these situations. No one is, uh, is, is saying that the looting or, or is correct. The most powerful demonstrations are the peaceful ones. The, the ones that I've been most touched by are when the police and protesters have come together, even marched together, uh, and said, Good point. we are Good point. with you on this. Very powerful uh, things that we're not seeing a lot of, um, or enough of, but that's actually what's happening here. There's a few bad apples. There's instigators, who, are, who they are and what their motives are. Uh, it just, it's, they just want to cause mayhem for whatever reasons, and if we'll, we won't know the truth. On so that ever let, me, let me address what I think was the hypocrisy of going in front of um, St. John's Episcopal Church and awkwardly holding up the Holy Bible. Uh, it looks like he's never held one before. And um, the, the optics of that um, have been well criticized in, in, in several news, uh, news stations and in, uh, in the newspaper. When you saw that, what was your initial reaction to it? I thought that is the quintessential photo that will define the presidency of Donald Trump, uh, that he beat his way out of the White House to stand in front of a church that is boarded up uh, past uh, uh, graffiti that said no peace, no justice, or something like that, uh, to show that, to show what? He was holding the Bible upside down and backwards, did not go there to offer uh, a prayer, a moment of reconciliation to read a verse, anything like that. This was just pure uh, weird optics that hopefully anybody can see through. Now, when you read the other side, they they oh good, he's taking back he's taking back the country from these looters and and I don't know re-Christianizing us. I, I'm not really sure what the message there was, but as far as what really happened, for those of us that were that can read and see with our own eyes. It's a startling image. It was a startling episode that is the defining. Does it mean anything that Pat Robertson of the 700 Club, um, an evangelical, if you will, um, came out and said, this was not good. This was not a good image. Yeah, when I saw that, I saw A2, Pat, A2. You know, <laughs> I, this, <laughs> when, you're, when you've lost Pat Robertson, <laughs> that says a lot, but but I'm not worried about the Pat Robertses. I'm worried about the 45% of Americans that still support Donald Trump and think that he is the best thing since sliced bread. Well, now those polls yeah. have changed. I just saw Reuter, uh, Reuter polls, uh, Reuters that 33% uh, uh, prove on the way Donald Trump has handled this, and 73% said he has not handled this uh, George Floyd situation at all, not well. Let's see what, you know what? The polls, that, that's, and I hope that's true. Let's see how that translates. If we're allowed to vote and if we can vote in, um, in November, it's, it's every time I think about this entire presidency, I think this man is absolutely trying to get himself run out of office by one egregious and outrageous thing after another. But in fact, it I doesn't happen. It doesn't it happen. Not happen. And people see that and they think that is wonderful. But hopefully this one, Americans will say, you know what, no, we need to have the right to assemble peaceably, assemble peaceably and, and air our grievances. And whether that's in the White that's House in the, or That's in the First involved. Amendment for sure. Uh, Stephanie, Stephanie, thank you, Winston. Stephanie, your thoughts, your comments, your observations, and let it fly. Well, I think that Winston picked us, picks overlaps with what I've been thinking about this, that 
the notion, um, fantasy, presumably, of uh, things changing in the White House. But um, I see this, um, this duration of the, of the demonstration and, uh, as very interesting. I, I, I think people are truly uh, focused on the, the real issue, which is justice for this man's uh, unlawful uh, death. But I, it's slowly inching up. And that's like every, every now and then you'll hear it moving up to there's a bigger thing here, okay? This is centuries of this kind of mistreatment. And, uh, and then um, you'll see it go higher to the vacuum of the leadership. No policy, no, no indication that there's gonna have, be anything happening now that we understand institutional discrimination, racism. And uh, now we want something to happen. Again, back to the vacuum in the leadership. Well, let me, let me address that right there. You say centuries of this sort of uh, injustice and, and I call it just a, an electronic version of a lynching that took place in front of our eyes with George Floyd. You know, we also had Eric Gardner from uh, Staten Island that remember he was trying to sell cigarettes one at a time and he also couldn't breathe. And uh, he died of asph asphyxiation. Um, then we have Brianna Taylor from uh, Louisville, who in her own home, as a, she's an RN nurse, in her own home, uh, the, the home was broken into by police and she was shot dead. So George Floyd is just one, I think it's the straw that broke the camel's back. It was yeah. too much. And it doesn't matter what they did. I mean, they overworked them in Janestown, Virginia, in 1610 or whatever. But the, and then they, you know, killed them indiscriminately. And, you know, and then all the way through the hanging, the, the whole thing. I mean, so this is just another round all under. And now we do electronic lynching. You brought that up, which is interesting. So the real modern version of it. But um, yeah, and I think that it's it's bigger than it because the the people are seeing this is a bigger thing than just this murder. Okay, so we're out here also because of the overarching uh, concerns that we have and we want address. And I th I feel that they're shifting over to wanting something to happen about the institutional aspect nature of the racism and that that takes policy and that takes law. Okay, well, let's talk about policy because how has Donald Trump already set the stage to now define himself as the law and order president, just like Nixon did. Uh, by the way, law and order president is just code word for saying um, anyone that acts out, uh, white America is gonna put them back down. Right. So that's law and order president. And to what degree is he now going to use this as his um to scare white america to agree with him well i think one nice sign is that representative king of the uh, house has been knocked out of the primary and he's white supremacy and he's anti-immigration it's the all of these things that that's true that just recently happened that's correct but the thing is that i think what the what the community is doing uh, in this in this demonstration, and their leaders and the church people that are speaking, they're moving it up to these bigger points. And because the administration is doing nothing, no policy, et cetera, no no in, no trying to make people feel better or you know, be empathetic, but what they're doing is accelerating accelerating the demonstration actually for their own purposes to show how vicious and and uh, and destructive these people are but that's going that's slapping back on them okay so that with this acceleration of it my fantasy is that it will finally come finally the fingers are going to point to him and that maybe there is going to be as with Does that happen between now and election election day it happen tomorrow or this afternoon I mean, okay. it can happen any time. And okay. in that circumstance, we might get a break. Nothing breaks up the Republican wall. This King, King uh, loss is important in that that's broken up. That's a, a, you know, a crack. But so we might be seeing some things, hopefully, that will. All righty. I want to I wanna, uh, switch gears here a little bit. Cynthia, um, to what degree does Donald Trump uh, find success of bringing in the army or military forces in order to be used against uh, the citizenry, the citizens of the United States. How, how successful will we be there and, and will it happen? And if it does happen, what will be the um, ramifications against Donald Trump or for Donald Trump? That's a, that's a big giant bunch of questions there. And each one is like pretty huge. So it's hard to, uh, hard to define. 
No, I don't think it would work. Yes, I think he will try. He is already setting the stage by dividing the people, right? Um, so he's already vilified the press. So we don't believe what we're being told from the press. And so many people are just being gaslit by all of the stuff that he's been putting out. Now we need to remember that he's made it clear and his administration has made it clear that the only people that are out there are Democrats. The Republicans are staying home. That's a big you know, line that he's drawn in the sand with everything that he's been putting out there. He also, at the same time, retweeted something that said the only good Democrat is a dead Democrat. Now that right there just, you know, is instigating people to go out and attack the protesters. So now the police are justified in what they've done, right? So if they're justified in doing that, then how much more will they be justified in doing? How much more can they expand that out to the rest of the country? So it's no longer just, a, you know, in the park in front of the White House, but it's all the streets everywhere anywhere before we know it we blink and we've got martial law and that's where i think he's headed and that's what worries me all right you know i know you've had that concern for some time winston to what degree was this officer that murdered uh, george floyd to what degree do you think he's been emboldened by donald trump um and the fact that he was being filmed by multiple people on the sidewalk with their camera phones and didn't seem to care a whit about it um is that just is that being emboldened by an administration and or or an attitude within the police force that has been in, emboldened by this administration? I mean, I was shocked on the, the fact that he looked right at the people filming him and he didn't have a care in the world. And nor did he lift up on his 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 knee on on Mr. Floyd's throat. It, it, it's it's just sad that we that any human would do that to another human and just not care for whatever reasons, whether he thinks he'll be pardoned or that it's part of his job, or hopefully he's just insane. But whatever it is, there's a man that's dead that our nation's on fire right now because they're justifiably so because of that action, because that was filmed. That That's what it was, but it probably happened, you know, 50 times in the previous week. It just wasn't filmed and not filmed as egregiously. Um, but now we're, we're moving to the, the meta level here. We're not going to we're not going to erase 400 years of incredible um, racial injustice in this country. We're just going to become aware that our systems, our policies, we incarcerate enormous numbers of people in this country. Of course, it's disproportionately uh, in communities of color. This is not, this is the start of of, of awareness, or it's a continuing of the start. It's been going on for a while, but there's been a big shift. There's been a big movement so that people now can individually start looking at themselves, at their small groups, at their organizations, at their institutions that they're involved with, and say, we need, what kind of America do we want to live in? Do we want to live in a racist, sexist, homophobic, poor, uneducated, um, violent America, or do we want to elevate all people to give them equality of opportunity towards a more perfect union? And I, that's the inflection point that we're okay, at. Okay, right I, I agree with what you just said, but tell me what the 30, 38% to 45% of Trump uh, loyal followers, what are they saying right now? Well, hopefully they're saying the same thing. And there's, and as Americans, we can we should agree on those basic principles. And hopefully we will step back and say, what is our nation about? What does it mean? And we are not we are not what we were 300, 400 years ago. We're not what we were 200 years ago or 150 years ago. We are evolving. We are better. We are getting better. And we have to use this as a growth point. And I, you know, it's, I saw where the, um, that, that quote, Cynthia, or that what Donald Trump had, uh, tweeted that only a uh, good Democrat is a dead Democrat, retweeting that video, horrendous. Uh, and he also uh, said it was going to be a great night for for the MAGA and uh, and you can't for, for MAGA supporters that uh, uh, to come out um, and I, I, I he was you know asking for people to come basically and, and uh, involve themselves in this um, issue. We're 
people can see beyond this, I hope. They need to see beyond this. They need to say, what are our core values as American people? We can have differences of opinion in how we apply things or how we, um, uh, the nuances, but basically what are our values as American citizens, as American people? What has sustained us and allowed us to thrive? And we need to look to that higher standard and, and hold ourselves accountable to it, hold our leaders accountable to it. And this is a chance that people can really step back and do that. And I'm hopeful. You're, that poll that you just said from Reuters, that gives me a lot of hope so that we are reaching yes. people that you may support Donald in other we'll ways. See if that, we'll see if that follows through in other polls in we'll the next see. week or two. Um, well, okay. Yeah. Hey, Winston, thank you very much for sharing thank your you. thoughts. Uh, Stephanie, uh, we only have a few minutes left, a couple minutes left. Um, do you think this officer was emboldened by an attitude that was set up very early uh, in the, the presidency? Remember the comment Donald Trump said in front of a, a group of um, police chiefs about, don't worry about hitting their heads on the car door or, or on, the, on, the, on the, um, the pillar of the roof when you put them in a car, and if their heads get slammed into it, um, oh well, so be it. Um, don't, you don't have to be so nice when you put them in a car. Do you think that was part of the tone that's been adopted by some bad cops in some of these precincts and some of these, these police agencies. Well, I, I think, you know, Tim, with your topic here uh, and, and that and, and reminding us about that statement for Trump, that is the crux of the matter because it's the 39% that do believe that that is the way it should be. And that any reflection, introspection that they do is about more Ruby Ridge, okay? And getting another gun, all right? Because they have a whole different schema of these, for these values. It, it, is, is it hypocritical to watch um, uh, people in, to bring their AK-47s, their AR-15s to the state capitol and, and um, protest and bring those in and yet not a word about the inappropriateness of that versus right. A lot of the peaceful protests have taken place in the last eight days, and yet it's been uh, basically covered as a violent, a violent um, and laying of grievances because there was uh, damage to property and to policemen. Is there any hypocrisy in this? No, they're true to their values, as is the policeman who had his knee on the neck and looking up at whoever was filming he didn't necessarily know that he was enacting his belief system okay and he is going to have that all the way through whatever horror show trial we're going to have to go through but, but we are not we we are not respecting the strength of these uh ways of thinking it's a different way of thinking now um how can can it ever change change yeah i guess it can there are things that we can do but one of the things they've got right now with donald trump is power okay yeah. and that's why they're getting away with this stuff they've never had power they've been laughed at before now they, they do been... okay well stephanie thank you uh, we've run out of time um i want to thank you stephanie cynthia as always winston thank you very much i wish i had time to say what goes on next week uh we just don't have the time but you can you can depend it's going to be a lot more chaos a lot more disruption, and hopefully something good comes out of it. I am, I'm, I'm hopeful that somehow in all of this, this, this chaos, be it the COVID-19 or the murder of George Floyd, that we get to a better place as a nation and as a people. And until then, my friends, aloha, and we'll see you next week, Wednesday, 11 o'clock. I'm Tim Apatel, your host. See you then.